Hi all, hope all is well. On today's video, I want to do something a little bit different. Now, this is my backyard electrolysis setup. What started as a simple experiment to create sodium hydroxide from seawater has turned into something completely unexpected. A chemical pump that moves liquid from one jar to another all by itself. I didn't design it to do this, but after watching it for several days, I realized this thing is alive with chemistry, pressure, and fluid dynamics. So I started digging into why. I'm using a traditional H cell, two sealed jars, a salt bridge between them, carbon electrodes, and a 13 volt power supply. One jar is the anode, it produces chlorine. The other is the cathode, it makes sodium hydroxide. I wanted to use the sodium hydroxide for cleaning and soap making and maybe collect some chlorine for bleach. But then something strange happened and kept happening. Every time I let the system run for two to three days, the cathode jar would start draining. Even though it was sealed, the anode, meanwhile, stayed full. Eventually, the cathode would empty all the way down to the tip of the electrode, which meant no more reaction. I raised the anode jar higher than the cathode, thinking gravity was the cause. It didn't stop it, so I knew it was something else. Here's what I think is happening. As chlorine gas builds in the anode jar, pressure increases. The salt bridge allows fluid movement. The anode side becomes so gas saturated and ionically charged that it starts to pull fluid across the salt bridge. Osmotic pressure and gas pressure equals chemical pump. It even seems to stop when the electrode is uncovered, like a self-regulating circuit. This is what's called a chemical displacement pump, or more precisely, a gas-driven electrochemical osmotic pump. The system moves fluid without a motor, without a siphon, just by chemical forces. Chlorine gas builds pressure, ion migration drags water, and evaporation helps form crystals that show where things are going. Speaking of crystals, have a look at this. On my cathode electrode, sodium hydroxide and carbonate started growing up the rod, forming fibrous white crystals. This is from the capillary action and air exposure. The NaOH reacts with CO2 becoming carbonate and crystallizes as the water evaporates. So what can you actually do with this setup? You can make sodium hydroxide for soap or degreasing. You can collect chlorine rich water to sanitize jars or make homemade bleach. And now, I know I can use this system as a slow fluid mover, a chemical timer even. This whole experiment taught me a few things. Electrolysis isn't just about chemistry. It's fluid dynamics, pressure, even engineering. Systems evolve over time. And if you let them run long enough, they'll surprise you. You don't always need to know what you're building to discover something useful. I'm going to refine this into a better chemical pump, maybe even a self-feeding reaction cycle. But for now, I just think it's amazing that a jar full of seawater, a couple of wires, and a few volts can do all of this. If you want to see what happens next, please subscribe. 
More backyard science is coming soon.